In the previous video, we studied basic computations with TensorFlow. Now you're going to build a real machine learning model. First, we'll see the proposed machine learning problem, font classification. Then we'll review a simple algorithm for classification called logistic regression. Finally, we'll implement logistic regression in TensorFlow. Before jumping in, let's load all the necessary modules. If you're copying and pasting to IPython, make sure your auto indent is set to off, otherwise the indentations tend to get messed up for functions and things like that. The module TQDM is optional. It just shows nice progress bars. And we'll set a seed of zero just to get consistent data splitting from run to run. With this course, we provided a data set of images of characters from five fonts. For convenience, these are stored in a compressed numpy file, data with labels.npz, that should be in the directory with this video. It will be copied into the other video directories as well. You can easily load these into Python with numpy.load. Train here holds the actual pixel values, scaled to zero to one, and labels holds the type of font that it was. So a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4, as there are 5 fonts. You can print out these values to look at them, although that's not very instructive, as most of the picture is all zeros. Only the center contains the image. If you have matplotlib installed, now is a good place to import that, and we'll use plot.ion to automatically bring up figures when needed. Here are some example images of characters from each font. If your plot appears very wide, you can just easily resize the window. It's often more work to resize it ahead of time in Python than if you're simply plotting interactively. Okay, some of these fonts are flashier than others. In the data set, each image is represented by a 36 by 36 2D matrix of pixel darkness values. Zero represents a white pixel, while 255 represents a black pixel. Everything in between is a shade of gray. Our goal is to decide which font an image belongs in, given that we have many other labeled images of the fonts. To expand the data set and help avoid overfitting, we've also jittered each character around in the 36 by 36 area, giving us nine times as many data points. It can be helpful to come back to this after doing later models. It's important to keep the original data in mind, no matter how advanced the final model is. If you're familiar with linear regression, you're halfway to understanding logistic regression. Basically, we're going to assign a weight to each pixel in the image. Then, take the weighted sum of those pixels. Betas represent the weights here, and X represent the pixels. This gives a score for that image being a particular font. Every font will have its own set of weights as they value pixels differently. To convert these scores into proper probabilities, that is the y's, we use what's called the softmax function to force their sum to be between 0 and 1, pictured here. Whatever probability is greatest for a particular image, we classify it into the associated class. You can read more about the theory of logistic regression in most statistical modeling textbooks, one good reference that focuses on applications is Bill Green's Econometric Analysis, 2012. Implementing logistic regression is pretty easy in TensorFlow and will serve as scaffolding for more complex machine learning algorithms. First, we need to convert our integer labels into one-hot format. This means instead of labeling an image with font class 2, we transform the label into 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. That is, we stick a 1 in position 2. Note the 0 up counting common to computer science, and 0 for every other class. And now we call our one hot function. For the pixels, we don't really want a matrix in this case, so we'll flatten the 36 by 36 numbers into a one dimensional vector of length 1,296, but that comes a little bit later. And recall that we've rescaled the pixel values, which are between 0 and 255, to be between 0 and 1. Okay, now we should split our data set into training and validation sets. 
This will help us catch overfitting later on. The training set will help us determine the weights in our logistic regression model, and the validation set will just be used to verify that those weights are reasonably correct on new data. Let's kick off the TensorFlow code by creating an interactive session right here. You're starting your first model in TensorFlow. We're going to use a placeholder variable for X, our input images. This is just to tell TensorFlow that we will supply the value for this node via a feed dict later on. Also note that we can specify the shape of this tensor and use none as one of the sizes. The none allows us to send an arbitrary number of data points into the algorithm at once for batch processing. Ybar, likewise, will hold our known labels to be used for training later on. To perform logistic regression, we need a set of weights. In fact, we need 1,296 weights for each of the five font classes, giving us our shape. Note that we also want to include an extra weight for each class as a bias. This is the same as adding an extra input variable that always takes the value 1. With all these TensorFlow variables floating around, we need to make sure they get initialized. Let's call that now. Good job! You've got everything prepared. Now you can implement the softmax formula to compute probabilities. Because we set up our weights and inputs very carefully, TensorFlow makes this very easy with just a call to tf.matemol and conveniently tf.nn.softmax. That's it! You've implemented an entire machine learning classifier in TensorFlow. Nice work. Where do we get the values for these weights? Next time, we'll use TensorFlow to train the model.